This is where we are currently calling home, a picturesque bay off the northwest end of Martinique. We're in a bit of a funk after the catamaran hit us, and after a few days of hiding out, living off pastries, it was time to pull ourselves together and go and explore the places we came here for. For those who have joined our story here, hi, we're Becca and Zach. We bought our boat Tailey last March after saving for years, and after six months of figuring it all out in the UK, oh, we ditched the lines and really started the adventure. So come along with us for the highs, the lows, and absolutely everything in between. Because we're not just doing it. We're bloody doing it. First on the list was visiting the ruins of the prison of St. Pierre. A place which holds a huge amount of significance for the town, which was devastated by a volcano a hundred years ago. So we've come to the prison now, and obviously it's not used anymore, um, but I used to be a criminology student, so I'm super interested in this kind of stuff. Um, and this is the one cell where a survivor from the eruption was staying at the time. What happened was the ash went all the way around and filled halfway, but because of the angle of the, like the design of the building, he had enough area in the cell to breathe clean air still. But this was the cell he was in, so come on, let's go see inside the cell. It's a pretty, a pretty miserable cell, isn't it? Really small, like almost touched both sides and yeah that's crazy it must have been really scary if you had the volcano erupt and not know who it was and not be able to get out it's a pretty horrible feeling isn't it We continued on our mission of exploring St. Pierre the following day when we took a bus up to the hills of Mount Pelé to have a wander around the Derpaz rum distillery. It smells hopsy almost to me. Yeah, it's it like smells... fermentation, doesn't it? Yeah, it smells like cider or something. Fermented something. Mm hmm. But it's very sweet. Start the visit. We're now at the cane yard. Hopefully you can hear me, it's pretty loud. But we're just reading, well, we're having to translate because it's all in French, but we're just reading about how they harvest the sugar cane and where it comes from. It comes from up there is Mount Pelly, which is where the volcano erupted. And obviously the eruption didn't happen too long ago, so the land, the soil is super fertile still. And they say that's what gives the rum its unique- Aromatic. Aromatic flavorings, uh, but they, they plant the sugar cane every five to six years and when it gets to like this big, they cut it down and they want to get it here as quickly as possible because the fresher it is, the better it tastes. And they dump it in the lorry, take it along a conveyor belt and then all these knives and hammers crush it and the sugar cane juice comes out like that. There's a Creole expression for sugar cane and it's it says the cane must have its feet in the field and its head in the mill. Basically meaning that as soon as it's cut, it's going to be in here to taste as good as possible. Sadly, it was only a morning excursion as we wanted to pick up anchor before lunch so we would make it to our next stop, Fort de France, in the daylight. It was just a pit stop here, mainly to check out the bouldering wall. Mm -hmm. 
as we had a whole lot of boat jobs to start in Lemmerin, 22 nautical miles south of here. Along, we'll tie up the lines now. Yeah, feels good. Feels really good. really fun upwind sail. The wind is coming from where we want to go, obviously everywhere in the Caribbean seems to be upwind sailing apparently, but we can see the south of Martinique now which is whoa, which is where we want to go, um, but we're gonna have to head out to sea basically and then tack back in because there's no way we can get there without tacking a few times. <laughs> Damn door. We're going the long way round. No, you're very long way round. <laughs> going towards St. Lucia. Just there. So we just tacked and now we're heading back towards land and hopefully We'll make it through the small gap, well it's quite a big gap actually, but between a rock and or an island and mainland. <laughs> We had made it to Lemeron, one of the biggest boating hubs in the Caribbean. With over a thousand boats and a whole handful of marine stores, some even accessible by taking a dinghy up a narrow mangrove passage, we were definitely in the right place to start ticking off some of the jobs which had accumulated since leaving Europe. facilities we've seen probably since leaving yeah in Europe they have really good ones they have them sunk into the ground in cities like Porto but this is really good considering in the Caribbean a lot of the time you either have to pay to get rid of your rubbish or you have to like sneak it into small bins and it's just an absolute hassle and you get told off all the time so yeah 10 out of 10 for Lemmerin 
waste services. I guess if they didn't have them, then everywhere would be trashed because there's so many boats that need them. But yeah, that's great. I like this place so far, Zach. It's set up for us. <laughs> So we've just got back from going to the shops and as we've got a massive list of boat jobs to do this week, it's a little bit late in the moment, it's about seven at night, but I'm actually going to do the gearbox oil change because I did the engine oil change last week or something like that. But you're meant to do the gearbox oil pretty much the same time you do that and I just didn't have time at that point, so I'm going to go and do it now. So hopefully I'll be able to catch my oil, not make a mess, and then tomorrow there's an actual proper oil disposal place here so I can actually go and get rid of it properly. We've had the um, engine oil stuff sitting in the lazarette for the last like, week or two so it'd be nice to get that done and then ticked off nasty oil jobs from the list. Oh, that is so cool. So I'm gonna let Becca guess what this is on the end of this bolt and why it's there. Because <laughs> I think it's really cool because I ne didn't notice this last time. Um, I've just wiped it clean, which is a bit of a hint for you. And it wasn't oil. It's a dipstick. It's not a dipstick, it's right at the bottom. If you pull this out, all the oil just comes out. It's gonna hold it. It's oily, you can hold it. It's a bolt, obviously, the mm. whole thing. What's that black thing, the square thing? An anode. No. <laughs> so why do we change the oil in here? Because it gets dirty. What what dirt gets in it? Oh, is it a magnet? It's a magnet. That's so cool. So on no here way. there was loads of like uh, black stuff like stuck to it, and I just thought it was just stuck on there. And I cleaned it, and I thought like, oh, it looks like a magnet. That's so cool. So what happens is, so obviously within the gearbox here, I'm covered in oil. But, it also um, looks like you're naked. <laughs> Sorry. I'm not. I'm <laughs> but it's my dirty black shorts. Yeah. In the gearbox here, obviously we don't have any combustion happening. Within the actual engine itself, the oil that's in there obviously needs to go through a filter for more than just reasons about like metal coming off. But in the gearbox here, the only thing that's going to get like dirty and caught in there is going to be shards and fragments of metal from inside the engine. Because obviously over time, the like gears are going to naturally wear. And so you shouldn't have any massive bits of gear on here or anything like that when you pull it out. But you will have like small bits of iron. And this is obviously to collect all of it because I've read in a number of the other um, gearboxes, there's filters in there you're meant to clean. I've never been able to find it in here. And I, I've, after research, I'm fairly sure it doesn't have one. But I never knew there was a magnet in here. That's such a good and idea. And so that's what collects it because the metal will obviously sink to the bottom of the oil. So huh. this is right at the bottom. So it just collects it all. That's so cool. Yeah, which is... Really good idea, never knew they had these inside engines. Ever since we've got the boat, we've had a slight issue with our galley hatch. We've had it leaking ever so slightly for a while. So we reset the whole thing a while ago. So it's all brand new under there. All of that's super good. The big issue that I have always seen is this rubber here is super old. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna strip all of this up, clean it all up on the inside there, and then um, replace this whole rubber with a new strip. They're really solid hatches, these ones. I don't know what brand they are, but they're super, just like solid hatches, but it just needs a little bit of love to bring it back to what it once was. This is the new rubber gasket that we picked up and it fits really, really well. We've been looking for a bit that would fit in here for quite a while, or pretty much since we've got the boat, but 
never found one that actually fits that well. But this fits really, really nicely, which is a welcome change. For sticking this all down, I've got some contact glue here. I'm just gonna use this on the bit in here. And then once we get to the end of the rubber here, I'm gonna put a smidge on there, because apparently this is what's best for it. So let's give it a go. Right, so we're all stuck down. What I'm actually gonna do is rest the hatch on this now, just so it keeps on putting pressure across all of it. It looks all right. Fingers crossed it works. Whilst we were waiting for the glue on the hatch to dry, I attempted to start fixing our GoPro which sadly took a swim back in Dominica, while Zach tackled the next job on the list. So, you guys are at the damp desk right now. I haven't really shown this area that much at all because it's not, not really how we want it to be at the moment. I'm sure we've got a few more upgrades in the future of how it all looks and everything like that. But we rarely use, well, we use some of the kit on here, but other bits we don't use that often. So we're just kind of a bit of a reshuffle around of things. The AIS and the VHF we use loads, obviously. Our chart plotter and a few other things on here, we don't use a ton. We use our nav text on here a bit as well as like a safety backup thing for weather and all that kind of stuff. But a lot of this other stuff we're gonna be moving around. Just got a new screen in the mount. And we've been wanting to do this for a while over here because this nav desk is kind of the only like proper sit down desk area that we've got. Always oh, Becca's kind of working in our bedroom a lot of the time and throughout other areas in the boat, but it's nice and cool down here. It's shaded. We've just bought a screen and what we're gonna do is basically take all of this stuff off the wall that we've got on here at the moment and put this screen in and then I'm gonna fit the other things around here. It's not probably gonna be a long-term solution, but we need a good editing spot. We've got our Navtex old AIS, which was just a uh, receiver which we didn't use anymore because we've got this new AIS here, which basically is wireless with our phones and works as a transceiver and receiver. This is our VHF, which we obviously use loads still. And then our ancient chart plotter, uh, which is massive, bulky, and we just don't really use it anymore. At the moment, we use everything on our phone. We don't even have the Caribbean charts for this thing at the moment, just because you need to get a card for it. So we're gonna get rid of this because we just don't use it anymore. Yeah, so this is the area we've got to work with. We might have to move this handle as well, and we've got to pull the wires back through, but yeah, I've got a bit of work to do here. So first things first, we're gonna get all this off. This wood's kind of beyond repair with how many screws have gone through it and everything like that. In this section here alone, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen in like a hand size area. So there's probably about 50 screw holes there altogether. But what's happened over the years is people have like added and removed things, and you can actually see where it's bleached the wood. That's not on there, that's just, that's the old color of the wood, but there's been a wire going over it for so long that when the sun has gotten through the blind here, it's obviously bleached this, but hasn't bleached any of this, so it's all weird colors, and oh, just look at that, that's disgusting. The thing with boat jobs, once you start something like this, we always find that it grows arms and legs and is always bigger than it's meant to be, but hey hey, it's gonna look really good once we're done with all this. It was all just going a bit too well, so we took advantage of the workflow and decided to install our Starlink cable permanently. We had been stepping over the cable since installing it back in Guadeloupe, but we were really happy with the internet speed where it was mounted, so it was time to drill a few more holes and finish the job off. Nice. 
Now that I've drilled through it, I just need to make it a little bit bigger the hole. So I'm gonna be using my Dremel. Um, I don't know what attachment I'm gonna use, but I just need to make the hole a smidge bigger because it's the biggest drill bit that we've got. That will probably do. Finally in. Woo. So we've actually got an old mount out here that I'm gonna remove. So this thing down here, we don't know what it was used for. I think it was probably a wind generator maybe at some point, but it's just sitting there, it's not really doing anything. So what we're gonna do is take all these bolts off, take the whole thing off, sand it down a little bit underneath it to make sure it's a clean base, and then I'm gonna drill through there and put it through there because this whole bit of decking here isn't the nicest anyway. I cleaned this up the other day and put some new fresh plugs in here, but it does need a bit of work and taking this off will be a bit of a nicer thing than we won't have two random things going through. So we found where we're gonna put our Starlink router or router, if you're American or English. And we're gonna put it in our bookshelf right here. It's actually quite a good spot. We were a bit skeptical about how quick the internet was gonna be from here, because it's a little bit blocked in there. So I'm gonna tidy all this up in a minute. It's an absolute state in here, because I've just been pulling stuff out. But it's gonna go in here. This is our, our little box, because it fits quite nicely in there. So we're gonna pack some books around it and put it in there. But the power cable is going to run straight from here to there and then this massive cable here is going to run through here in through here and then i'll have the wire not tightly coiled but loosely coiled around the back of my wardrobe here yeah the speeds are also really good we just did a speed test and it says it's fast yeah which is really nice so happy days <laughs> becky you looking at your next boat so the mizzen, boom, is as big as our boat. <laughs> oh my god, Tainy's like quivering. She's like, ah, oh. that's amazing. Look at the sugar Where scoop. Is it going? The sugar scoop in the back. Surely that's not going in the marina. Yeah, it looks like it is. Do they have a space for it there? Yeah, they got some of the big pontoons there. That's a monster. So that boat is the boat Q and I've just googled it and found some really interesting stuff about it. The sail catch Q was launched in 2008. The two master piece of art was created by Alloy Yacht and designed by Ed Dubois of Dubois Naval Architect. One of the largest sailing yachts in the world is 54 meters long. It has all electric windows. We keep the windows open when the weather is fine and we close them when it's windy. Air conditioning is also very nice. <laughs> That's crazy. Thanks for checking in and following our voyage. Next week, it's a big one, as we begin the job of replacing our standing rigging ourselves for the very first time, and navigate our way around some newbie mistakes we made. And I was at the top of the mast when he was like, oh no, you don't do that unless you're taking the mast off. And I was at the top. See you then.